my counterpart did a flawed analysis last video comparing the ZWO 2600mm camera to his Starlight Express SX825 camera. I'm here to do a controlled experiment to set things straight. Based on last video's flawed results, the SNR from the Starlight was much better than the ZWO. There are a ton of problems with the comparisons. But I, Dr. Detail, am here to fix things. And what I want to say is this. My counterpart's hypothesis that pixel size made the ZWO get worse SNR than the old CCD camera is... Uh... Unfortunately, a plausible one. I know. I know. My counterpart is silly sometimes. I can't believe I'm agreeing with him either. But I think he has a point. Now, to start the experiment that will show this is the case. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. While Dr. Detail is doing the experiment, let's talk frankly. My last video was flawed. I admitted it several times. I would like more data to test these ideas. Before I show you the results, let me warn you, this is not a perfect comparison. In fact, it's a pretty flawed comparison. I was shocked by these results, to be honest. And I think you should take them with a grain of salt. There are a ton of confounding variables at play here. In that video, I said that the 2600mm and 6200mm cameras are possibly held back by two things pixel size, and less than stellar quantum efficiency in hydrogen alpha. The quantum efficiency is what it is. But many of you had trouble with the conclusion about pixel size. There are, I think, some misconceptions about pixel size. My Starlight Express had about 1.4 times the signal-to-noise ratio as the ZWO. Dr. Detail and I will show the results of an experiment that will demonstrate that pixel size and binning is more important than you think to get good signal-to-noise ratio. SNR isn't the only thing that helps you get a good image. The 2600mm and 6200mm cameras have quite big sensors. They'll get a great field of view. Their pixel size without bending works great for small, fast telescopes. What I have a problem with, though, is these cameras are being advertised as getting great SNR and having great resolution. However, I would argue that with them, you either have good SNR or great resolution. Keep in mind that resolution is limited by seeing. And so I've set up an experiment comparing my old CCD camera to my ZWO294MM to demonstrate that. Hi, it's me from the future. I can only stay for a few seconds before I have to travel back. But I just got done with Dr. Detail's experiment and we found some crazy things about the accuracy of the prediction versus the real world data. Really crazy. Basically, the SNR... Huh. That's weird. I feel apprehensive about something for some reason. Anyway, so our experiment should show that binning is really important. Now, you might be asking yourself, Mark, your shoulder is broken, you can't lift your mountain telescope, and Dr. Detail is just a stick hmm. figure. How can you do an experiment? Well, that's a good question. Light is light, whether it comes from a deep sky object or, say, a light panel. I've used a light panel to take flats. I tested whether it outputs a constant brightness, and it does okay. It takes about 20 minutes to fully warm up, but even then the difference in light output is about 0.5% from about two minutes after it turns on until about one hour. Let's talk about SNR and area a bit before we check in with Dr. Detail. So I got a few comments last video that said things to the effect, pixel size doesn't matter because the signal to noise ratio per unit area doesn't change. I 100% agree with that last part, but I would also say, let's take a step back and analyze what was said just for a second. What if the area that you're measuring the SNR of changes? Look at this, it's an image circle. Pretend it is the image circle of your deep sky object. Let's overlay a camera sensor over it. Let's say that the area of the camera sensor is one square unit. We'll assume it's a perfect camera and we only have to worry about shot noise. Let's also assume it only has one giant pixel. If we have, say, 100 photons hitting the sensor every sub-exposure, our SNR will be 10. Nice. The SNR for the area of the camera sensor is 10. But what happens if we want better resolution? A one pixel camera is, after all, not going to produce a good image. Well, let's get another perfect camera, but this time it has two pixels. Let me ask you a question. Does adding pixels to the camera increase the brightness of our deep sky object? I mean, 
does the deep sky object we're imaging say to itself, wow, that astrophotographer on Earth has more pixels in their camera tonight. I'm going to double the amount of photons I send to them. The answer, of course, is no. The DSO doesn't care about your camera. It still sends 100 photons on average through your aperture into your sensor. But now we have two pixels. Each pixel now only detects 50 photons, assuming equal illumination of the imaging circle, of course. The SNR of each pixel has decreased. 50 divided by the square root of 50 is now 7. The average SNR of the pixels is 7. Instead of one good pixel, we have two less good pixels. They can vary randomly a bit in their brightness. We now have four pixels, then the SNR of each pixel is five, and the average SNR of all four pixels is five. The SNR is cut in half, but does this really matter? If we combine all the pixels, we still get an SNR of 10. Well, if you don't bend, then it does matter. But wait, I think Dr. Detail has an update with his experiment. Before I get into the experiment itself, let's talk about the previous video's results. Namely, that SNR was about 1.4 times better for the older Starlight CCD than the newer ZWO. Let's assume that the experiment between the Starlight and ZWO was not flawed, and we did get a perfect experiment. The number of photons hitting each 41.6 square micrometers from the DSO is 100. The Starlight Pro has 65% quantum efficiency in HA, which means it should detect 65 of them on average. Its pixel size is 6.4 microns, so the area is 41.6 square micrometers. So all the photons hit the pixel. We'll assume dark noise is minimal. Here are the other noise values. The theoretical SNR is 7.39. Now let's do the same thing for the 2600 mm. The main thing is this. The pixel size is smaller for the 2600 mm. In fact, it is 2.94 times smaller. Thus, each pixel should record only 20.41 photons. The SNR is 4.3. Theoretically, the SX825 should be getting 1.73 times more SNR. That's a lot. You'll more than half the time you need to image a target. This theoretical value is very close to the 1.4 that was measured in the last video. Now keep in mind that the 2600mm camera was attached to a slightly faster scope and had better filters. It's not surprising that the actual measurement was only 1.4 times better. Hopefully you can see why my counterpart was so tempted to say pixel size was the main factor and why the starlight was outperforming the ZWO. But the comparison was still flawed, which is why I'm doing my own experiment with the ZWO 294mm Pro. The ZWO MM and BIN2 mode should be better for SNR in many respects than the 2600mm. The pixel size is 4.63 microns compared to the 3.76. The quantum efficiency for HA is around 75 to 80 percent. But the CCD should still get better SNR because it has bigger pixels. The experiment is simple. I'll attach both cameras to the 6 inch Ritchie Creation telescope. In front of the telescope will be a light panel. I'll take 30 10 second exposures and experimentally measure the SNR. On this channel, there are two ways that we've measured SNR. The first is through the SNR app. The second is to measure the actual brightness and standard deviation values of the pixels as I stack images. This second experimental measurement should give us the actual SNR of the stacked images. A few things to keep in mind. I will be measuring an equal area from the center of each camera's sensors. If this is the imaging circle and this is the size of the two camera sensors, then I figured out the pixels I need to sample when stacking each camera's pictures to get roughly the same area. Second, the Starlight and ZWO have different back focus values, meaning the Starlight sensor is about 10 millimeters more inside the camera than the ZWO. The Starlight Express also needs a male to male adapter, which is about two millimeters. I adjusted the back focus to make the sensors equal distance from the light source. Three, I tested the 294mm in bin two mode. I also tested it in bin one mode for fun. Four, I chose gain values for bin one and bin two to be unity gain. These gain values also have similar read noise values. This is to help keep things as similar as possible. 
And finally, five. I know my counterpart is a bit dorky, but he put a lot of time and effort into making this video. It might be nice to subscribe and possibly like the video. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Before we get into the actual experimental results, if we look at the theoretical values, we should expect the Starlight Express to get 1.3 times better SNR than the ZWO, mainly due to pixel size. So what did I find? Wait a minute, Dr. Detail. I know that some in the audience are saying this really doesn't matter. The SNR for the total area is the same. In other words, the total flux is the same. We should get the same total signal for the area and therefore differences in pixel SNR don't really matter. Well, let's quote channel hero Craig Stark who posted about this on Cloudy Nights. He said, for a given aperture, F ratio and image sampling rate are synonymous. Is it, a is it a huge effect? No, but it's one that will be present to varying degrees and one that can hit you where it hurts. If you're running with a line filter and trying to get that faint H alpha image and are already pushing to get five, 10 or 15 minute shots to show much of anything, you're running down near the read noise. If you're down near the read noise, your SNR in that part of the DSO is very low. Spreading the light across more pixels will drop the SNR and make that part look crummy. So I think that's a good quote, but I'm gonna put it another way. We are not stretching area, we're stretching pixels. The more SNR you have for a group of pixels, the more you can stretch those pixels to bring out the detail. This is true for a single sub as it is for a stack of subs. Let's say that we have a group of four pixels. Each pixel gets 100 photons like in the previous example. The SNR of each pixel is 10. Now let's say that the same area has 16 pixels. Each pixel now only has an SNR of five. The overall image is darker. And when we stretch it to make it brighter, and this is critical, we are also stretching the noise. To make it have the same brightness of the four pixel group, we haven't gained SNR. Their group of 16 pixels will look noisier because we still have an average SNR of five for those pixels. It looks more random and randomness is the definition of noise. It's what cuts into the signal. It's what cuts into the structure. Now I want to show you my results. Compared to the ZWO in bin two mode, the Starlight Express got about 1.4 times the SNR. That's really close to the 1.3 that was estimated. If we look at the theoretical and measured SNR as we stack from one to 30 images, then this would be the theoretical SNR and this would be the measured SNR. Look at how well everything matches. It's good when the theory and data match. It means the model you have is useful. It also means that pixel size does affect SNR even when the total photons per unit area entering the telescope is the same. Very nice. Hi, Dr. Detail. Oh, it's my other counterpart. Did you also test bin one mode? I'm really interested in what you found. Yes, and the results are pretty much exactly as you'd expect. Bin two modes pixels are twice the size of bin one and bin two mode got almost exactly twice the SNR. You're positive? I did the bin one test twice. I got the same results both times. That's really cool. I'm going back in time to spoil it to the viewers. Wait, you only have enough power in the time teleporter for a few seconds of time travel. Too late. So what did we learn otherwise? That bigger pixels gets you SNR faster, all things being equal. Binning is a good way to simulate bigger pixels and a two by two bin will almost double your SNR. Doubling your SNR decreases integration time you want by a factor of four, but you will lose resolution. Keep in mind that the pixel size of the 2600 mm and 6200 mm cameras is, is really pretty good for small, fast astrographs. And you might not want to bin at all at those lower F ratios. We've got some good evidence that the only reason the Starlight camera was outperforming the ZWO cameras in this and the last video in terms of SNR is pixel size. It does matter. Now let me say this. Pixel size matters for the faint details more than the brighter ones. It's kind of hard for you to tell the difference between 50 SNR and 100 SNR, but it's really easy to tell the difference between five and 10 SNR. Also, for those of you who don't bin and use a 2600 mm or 6200 mm, keep in mind that sometimes your monitor is doing the binning for you. The 2600 mm camera has a resolution of 
6,248 pixels by 4,176 pixels. If you're viewing the image zoomed out on an HD monitor with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels, it will look pretty good. The reason I think is this, your computer has to start averaging the pixels together, effectively binning them. But if you want to blow up the image to make a large print or zoom in on the image, you may start seeing less NR than you expect, <laughs> so be warned. If you have a CMOS camera, you have the freedom to bin whenever you want. It could be as you image. You could take the images at full resolution and then bin before you stack. You could theoretically process the whole image and then downscale it using averaging. It's up to you. So will I go back to my Starlight camera to get better SNR? Probably not. The field of view is great with my ZWO and the image scale works better for my refractor. For me, the trade-off isn't worth it. There's more to imaging than just SNR. If you're new to the channel, you may consider this other experiment I did examine the effect of SNR of a narrowband filter on M16. Thanks for watching.